What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and today we have, we're not doing an opening, but we have kind of like a big mail day where I want to show off a bunch of stuff that I recently picked up. No super high ticket items, but uh, before we get there, actually I want to have a couple of questions for you guys I want to hear from you or some feedback. And the first is that I went to my first league uh, th tonight, this evening, and there was actually no competition. It was kind of just like a bunch of people get together and they play a bunch of casual games, um, which, and everyone was super chill. It was a lot of fun, uh, but they didn't mean it was free, which was nice. And uh, the judge actually hooked me up with a bunch of uh, league promos, which is really nice of them. And there's some pretty cool cards. Zet balls could be pretty useful. Uh, two electro powers, which if we ever try a peek around deck, those would be cool to use. Mysterious Treasure, these are going in my Malamar deck. And ooh, we can finally play Naga Natal. I actually don't not sure if I have a playset, but this will definitely help. And then some additional stuff still steal us. Steven's Resolve. I have no idea what printed in USA. Steven's Resolve, some field blowers, which is cool, and then Enhanced Hammer. So that was had a good time. And the one thing is they I kinda asked if, you know, would they have a problem? I didn't really get into the whole YouTube channel thing, but I did ask if they would have a problem with me filming matches and they said no you know just get you know obviously get permission from the other player as long as they're cool with it they were so question to you guys is do you have any interest in seeing those my initial thought is you know I'll just record it and fast forward through the turn so you kind of just see the important parts and maybe I'll just narrate on top of it with a voiceover um, versus like the regular audio maybe wouldn't be that interesting so let me know what your thoughts are in a comment down below and let's get into our mail day so first we're going to start off with some PSA cards that I picked up at the recent PWCC auctions and uh, we didn't get anything too crazy um, so one thing I'm really into is vintage cards and also Japanese problems. I feel like they're really cool. Uh, the first card is actually neither of those. I just saw this and it's like, you know, I'll just put a low bid and if I get it, cool. If not, I don't, that's cool as well. And the first one is a Japanese from Ultra Shiny, Galician Shiny. And any evolution is cool with me. And actually, this is a PSA 10, and I'm pretty sure I got it really cheap. You know, I think with the release of Hidden Fates, all the Ultra Shiny stuff went down significantly in price, which, hey, I will take it. Uh, pretty cheap card. PSA 10. Put that over there. And next, we have two vintage cards, and they are... So this is a Jungle Unlimited Scyther Hollow, which is cool. It is only a PSA 8. Uh, I will say that, you know, at first I didn't have much interest in PSA 8, but I think I threw like mid-teens bid and actually got it. And a card from 1999, I will take that. Uh, one thing about PSA 8 is like, obviously they're not worth a whole lot, but I would be comfortable kind of like leaving a PSA set. PSA 8 set kind of like just lying around I wouldn't feel the need to keep that safe uh, in storage or something like that so I feel like you know I, I wasn't really interested in pursuing a 8 collection but maybe I would do so just to have because uh, my favorite thing about binder collections which we'll, which we'll get into much more is you know I don't mind having those out in the open uh, all the cards that might be worth something are badly damaged so you know I'm warming up to the idea of a PSA 8 set as well and here is the Wigglytuff also PSA 8 uh, I don't remember off the top of my head but probably pick this up for super cheap uh, all the high ticket items that I was kind of hoping for you know I got way outbid and then now on to Japanese promos kind of the same story none of these are perfect tens but I'm just I just like having them in my collection and one of them is actually a card that we have a bunch of but we still haven't sent anything off the PSA one day we will do that and that is the scream Eevee so the only one we picked up was the Eevee I think I like the the side obviously the Mimikyu one is super expensive, but the side is pretty cool. And that one is the PSA 9, so I didn't get the 10. And think about Japanese promos, guys, if you're not familiar with, like getting a 9 is pretty disappointing. I wonder if this is Nick right here, but kind of like if you want a good card, it's going to be 10 for Japanese. 9 is like, it's probably like the equivalent of English 8, uh, maybe 7, where it's like, you know, 9 is acceptable for English, Japanese, not so much. You really want that 10 to say you actually have a good PSA card. And then the second one is another Japanese promo series that I am a huge fan of, and that is the Pancho Pikachus. And the one we picked up another copy of is Rayquaza. Not the shiny one, but just the green one, which I think I actually like more. It stands out more, the green pops out. And that one is another PSA 9. So nothing too crazy, but I just love these cards. Actually, I love all the Japanese promos. The screams are awesome. The ponchos are awesome. The Marios are ridiculously cool. There we go. So that is our PSA cards that we picked up. 
and the other batch of stuff actually i just will just say you know the reason i made these purchases or one thing that kind of like enabled me to do so was the cashback promos that they had on ebay and then the next one's gonna be tcg player uh in my opinion that's definitely the time to make purchases is whenever those things come up you know 10 percent back it's not 10 percent off you get it back later on in store credit but you know, that stuff builds up over time and if you always kind of take advantage of those you don't really make many purchases in between those that will really build up so our next kind of thing is i talk about binder collections a lot especially when we do like market videos and we're going to make some do some real work on our binder collections as far as watsi sets and so some of the real vintage stuff and I kind of hinted at this in previous videos, but we went after Jungle First Edition and Fossil First Edition, and I think we basically completed both of those. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will do a binder update in the near future. I actually just opened a bunch of mail. You can kind of see like that was just the from the envelopes that I cut open. And in no particular order, let's go into some jungle cards. Oh, we got a huge stack of them. First one is Jolteon First Edition. And so these were all light play cards. Or they're supposed to be i feel like some sellers are kind of iffy uh so i'm going to go back and check the conditions and any of them this one does look good and anything that is kind of concerning i'll take a look at the price i paid and if i don't really agree with that i'll talk to them try to work something out flaring on first edition. i think this was the most expensive one so the most expensive card for these cards from 1999 i think was basically under $20 uh, this one I think this one's still acceptable so yeah these are first edition really cool for the binder you no know, none of these you can really send to PSA you probably get like I don't know seven or eights actually too bad I don't know um, but it's unlikely I'll send these to PSA unless it looks really good but again I bought the light play version on purpose as the goal is to put in the binder this one looks pretty good pincer first edition Kang is kind I believe this one is super difficult to grade um, but this one, obviously, it's just light play. And let's just take a look, though. And, oh, uh, yeah, so this is one... I'll have to double-check the price I paid. Uh, it's not terrible, but... I'm not some. I feel like people's definition of light play, mod play, can be quite varying, especially when it comes to these older cards. Vileplume first edition. Ah, this stuff is so nostalgic for me. Jungle was the first set that I was around for the initial release, so I do actually have some uh, PSA or no, not PSA first edition cards. Here's one that's you know it's very questionable. Good amount of edge wear on the bottom, some on the top, some on the side. So I'll double check how much I paid for this, and if I think it's not reasonable or I think that there are other possible ones, I'd probably return it. Needle Queen, very nice. Pidget. First edition. Oh, this was another one. Pretty dinged up. But happy to pick this up and add it to my binder. Or probably will add to my binder. I think this site there is actually quite nice. So you can kind of tell when sellers are, I don't know, more cautious. This is like in a sleeve, in a hard case, in another sleeve, taped to an envelope. Scyther, this card is really cool. I thought Scyther was such a cool Pokemon when it kind of first revealed it in the show. Then we have a Wigglytuff. This one's not first edition. I have to double check. Like, did I even buy this or did they send me the wrong card? And oh my, that is super beat up. I think that was the only card that wasn't first edition. So that might just be a straight up mistake. And here we have Venomoth, first edition. This one does look really nice. Yes, like if I needed a first edition PSA 8, like maybe that could get it. I'm not sure if I'll get the 9. And then Vaporeon, another pricey one. Uh, this one does, this one looks okay though. Actually, there might be a couple extra nicks, but uh, I would say this is kind of light play. All right, so yeah, we basically completed. I'm not sure about that Wigglytuff. That might be the only question mark. And we basically completed first edition jungle for our binder collection. And now we're moving on to fossil. Starting off with Ditto. Very cool Pokemon when this came out and turns out like, eh, actually, that's not that good. But really cool. First edition Ditto. Ah, legendary birds. They finished them. They zapped those started in base and the other two got left out and they eventually came in Fossil. Don't think any of them were that good. But this card is in quite nice condition. And then we have Haunter. 
I didn't really play competitive, but I always liked the idea of this. It does have the flip coin. Um, if heads, you can prevent all damage. And then his attack only did 10 damage, but you constantly put your opponent to sleep. So just one coin flip away from basically negating his turn. Thought that was pretty nice. Hypno. I was never too crazy about Hypno. <laughs> and I think this one, was this one in bad condition? Let's take a look. Is this light play? Ooh, that is Edgeware on the top, Edgeware along the side, Edgeware on the bottom. Ooh, not sure about that one. Kaboot Tops, really cool. This was when they first introduced Pokemon that evolved from fossils. We got Magneton. This is Magneton's second printing, so he was one of the few ones that was in base and then again in fossil. Ooh, this one's another one. Quite a bit of edge wear, but you know what? At the end of the day, depending, I think this one I only spent like six dollars on, so it's probably fine. Especially I'm going to be powering this in a binder, so I don't, I have no problem with that. Here is an Articuno. Oh wait, all the birds got in uh, fossil actually, and this one is quite ni nice condition. I feel like this is actually one I would consider setting to PSA. If I bought a near mint card and it was in this condition, I would probably be fine with it. This one is a head scratcher. We have the Aerodactyl First Edition, but it's the pre-release. I'm pretty sure I didn't order a pre-release one. I have to double check. Because I think I need the non-pre-release one. But this one, condition-wise, seems pretty fine, for especially for light play. But why does it say pre-release there? Hitmon Lee. This card kind of has a nostalgic, uh, has some nostalgia for me. Uh, when I was really young, you know, a good friend of mine, I happened to just see at the mall, and they're like, oh, we just bunch, bought like a whole box of uh, Pokemon packs. I was like, oh my gosh, it's really cool. And I was like happy for them, but like, you know, part of me was just jealous. And like my friend could tell, I was like, you know, oh, you know, do you want a pack? I was like, no, 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 you're, you, you, no way. Uh, you guys, you guys spent your own money on that. And, you know, we were kids at the time, so that wasn't cheap. And then he's like, nope, just take the pack. And so that was really heartwarming for me, you know, meant a lot. And I actually pulled a Hitmon Lee that is a card that I've prized card in my collection that uh, I will send to PSA one day, you know, it's first edition. And then we have Muck. I think Muck came from a deck, but this one is first edition and uh, didn't like Muck at the time. <laughs> so that's it and we managed to complete again we completed our first edition jungle first edition fossil and i think we still have to do some unlimited work uh jungle no symbol will take a little bit of time it's a little bit pricier and then we'll move on to rocket so i feel like i'm gonna be focusing on the raw cards for a little bit before i do some heavy lifting on the psa side if anything i'll just pick up these you know cheap sets for eight sets or something like that if they're really cheap and uh, but my last question to you guys is what do you want to see in future openings obviously we can do hidden face cosmic clips or if there's other sets you want to see let me know in a comment down below um, we have some options and I want to hear from you guys we did this in a previous video and I only got a couple answers so I want to make sure like, guys let me know what you want to see uh, and we'll see if we can make it happen but uh, yeah hope you enjoyed the mail day and uh, yeah reminder also yeah let me know what your thoughts are on matches irl matches for videos and uh tomorrow we'll have an actual opening i'm thinking we're gonna do a cosmic eclipse box so that could take a while i'm super excited look forward to that and uh yeah thanks for watching guys link co like comment and subscribe all down below i'm moana turtle and i'll catch you guys next time Oh, and one last thing, if uh, you managed to make it to the end of the video, um, yeah, like I said, we, we I want to know what you guys want to see. We do have some options, and we got some stuff we can open. Bunch of Hidden Fates, good amount of Cosmic Eclipse. So, yep, let me know.